is the most interesting game in this in this group because against the Elkos none of the teams had a chance. Right, they are I think quite equal in starting. Right. Here it goes. Boston got to the ball first. It's going forward. And right away in the struggle. Grabbing onto the, the ball. That is Tatic for now. We're in the close corner over the Australian basket. Which we have two women actually, actually playing, playing for the, the goals, both on the goal. They're close going to the basket now. First attack, first attack. But still keeping the ball from the Unidive goal. And there was a referee call from the referee. Oh. Uh, Trending, I think, a free throw for Boston. This game can get has potential to get quite heated as well. I think that both teams have players who play can get quite aggressive. So let's see how it evolves. Should be some sort of equal strongness in the teams. Yes, the yesterday both teams had goals scored on anti basket so that they didn't roll back correctly. And the main main issue was with Boston yesterday at least against Orcas that they got tired. Second half time they were very tired and they got a lot of goal scored on. Okay, so here we have Mate Galeano positioned around the basket, grabbing onto the ball. And the Boston now was still up putting pressure on the Unidad goals at the basket. But the Unidad goals are quite close in the defense, not letting them through. And we only have one player of Boston from now on down. So then something from referee, open side referee apparently called. There's some Please go for now. Boston Narwhals. Both teams have a long, long distance for traveling coming over here. Great, great that they do it. That's a big, big commitment, especially in a year of ch World Championships. Some players were in Graz as well, had to invest the time, the resources. Yeah. To come all the way to Austria for two weeks. Okay, and that's it's an attack. Of goal intent by Mate Galeano still trying. He got grabbed, pulled to the surface. But we still have the ball. So there was Tim Bird now who got the ball. You can see the hockey players with the, the fins with the yellow blade. Those are usually hockey players. Right. The player fins used in hockey. I think those is good, but underwater rugby is quite more interesting for me. But here we go. Another attack. Number eight attacking again. Oh, that's the pass going to the Unidam Gold team. Let's see if they can make it. Coming over to the Boston now with half of the pool, but yeah. Okay, so goals got the ball now, counter attack. Uh, this is the captain Joe D, I think, get it out. It's Jody Wilson. And another counter attack. We're back in the half of the goals. Then he's alone still. And the other's coming. Because that was a pass under defenders back, but there was not really someone. Oh, Mate Galeano has the ball and a good by himself. Great. That was one against one. Nice goal from the open side. So good morning for people tuning in. Now we have 78 people watching us online. Guess some are watching not by themselves. So it's uh, Lisa and Beate here commenting from Berlin. Yeah. Good morning, everyone, and good evening to Queensland. I think it's like okay. So the goals are now the ball is in the close corner of the Boston basket. One player attacking. No, no, by himself. Okay, the goals are very well positioned. Oh, no. Actually, there was no defender. It looked there was no defender. Maybe they came down. 
Now Wolves got the ball again. Some surface scrum happening. So we're missing a player now under the scrum actually to catch the ball. Boston has the ball. A little bit stronger than the goals. Let's see how it keeps on evolving the game. Maybe they will get tired, one of, one of the teams or both of them, and it's who gets less tired or who gets tired first. The counter attack now by the goals. No one on the ball, and this was almost <laughs> rebound against the ball, caught by the goalie. That would have been a very good opportunity by Fleo Corrales. Yes, there's a question always do you throw the ball or do you make sure to put your hand in with it? And this would have been a good case yeah. to go for option B. At least you need to go closer. Right. Yeah. It was a great chance. I think this gives them more spirit then. Because oh, the yeah. Boston player threw the ball towards the outside, got caught by Mate Galeano. in midfield, not many players present underwater, okay, Frey Corrales counter-attack, going, got the ball again, defense is here, oh, we're gone from, are we still online? Not sure, there uh, is struggling over the basket of the Boston Airball side of the pool, and struggling at the surface. They have switched a bit. Now we're more on the on the side on the half of the right. of Narwhals. So the goals have it is e either the Narwhals got a bit more tired now from attacking all the time. Again, or the goals an attack decided to, to switch to get a bit more aggressive. Right, maybe it's the game chance. Yes. That switch a little bit the atmosphere underwater. And now that was a nice goal for oh, going. There was right. a space under the, the goalie. Where they got this game pushed. There was a fall, falling down, uh, pushed the goalie a bit more to the back and managed to score, I think, under their, their back. So one, one, one. Two minutes left for in the first half time. That's an interesting game. It's really interesting in, in that way that it's really changing situation. You can't really um, say what, what will be the result from now. Both teams have uh, with a few unexperienced players, uh, both teams have uh, but some faster, more experienced players um, from Colombia <laughs> who are now living in the US and in Australia. So let's see, it's a, it's a very interesting game so far. Do you uh, know how many of those team members are also in the national team? Do you remember those from the last games? <laughs> Personally. Yeah. So, uh, we had in Graz from uh, the goals, we had Federico Corrales was playing and coaching the women actually, Hanna Berenger, Berenger was playing with the women, Ricardo Eliart as well, so one, two, three, four, five of the players were in Graz, so four for the men and one for the women actually, were in national teams and uh, Boston we had I think Jay, Matteo and Mike, so three players were uh, playing in Graz, I think. Not so sure. So, somehow equal teams. Not really, but same strongness. Boston has a couple more older players, like Timmy and... Right. Uh, so more or less of hockey experience actually, not many years of hockey but it's uh, 40 plus year old players so maybe, I don't know how the condition is, if the game gets a bit faster maybe they will, they don't have the same physical condition as younger players of course. Yeah, but they, I think they have the experience so that's, that's something you need to equalize. Yes. And they're still here. So the Boston team needs to do things by their own, that means they have to pay for everything on private idea, um, no support from a club, that's really um, high motivation. Ooh, so Boston lost the ball now, 
counter-attack by the goals. Yeah. So it was any levels before I got, got the ball. Passed onto the closed side again. Well, ben Wang here was fighting for the ball. Yeah. Three weak again. Okay. Thirty five seconds left for the first half. And the goals now are circulating the ball against the Boston basket, but not with the pass was not as sure as it should have been, got caught by the Narwhals. Then call from the referee uh, that got out of the playing area. So free throw for the goals with ten seconds to go for the first half time. Yeah, and it's now we time. have the break. We change sides. So how do you see this game, Beate? <laughs> it's really watching those guys going forward and you feel like, ah, go faster and now turn around, there's someone. And when you're on water, you never see, like, it's different when you watch instead of when you are on your own underwater. It's really yeah. great to see. It is. It's an interesting game because they're quite equal strength teams and yesterday of course you could see how both of them played against the Orcas but you know, it's really different because you cannot uh, evaluate really a team based on how how much or how they lose against a way stronger, faster, more experienced team who won last year the, the Champions Cup and uh, is basically the 90% of the world champions team. Really? From national team, yes. But well, national team was 13 Orcas plus two other players. So it, yeah. it's another level and we have now some well, quite young teams actually, both of them. So it's interesting to see how they play and I would like to see how they, they, they play in the overall competition because I think they're good. But what I've noticed team. so far is what? What you see on the first day of a tournament can be totally different sometimes on the second day. So a, a lot of factors changing team spirit, maybe sometimes not basically, but there are surprises all the time, yes. So still, I'm the optimistic person saying, oh, you can go, you can win, just try. Of course, and now, now it's a good game for those two teams to be really fighting to get the second spot in the group. Yeah, 1-1. One, one, if you look at the scoring yesterday, it's totally different. But they're really same, at the same level, I think. And I guess now they're talking about how to change, how to both teams how to switch gears and actually convert their goals, score a bit more, and win. That's the aim to look for. I was asking if they would like to comment on one of the games here and um, they said no, they are all in from the Boston team so all players coming over are now in the water but it would be interesting to have from the teams one person having but I'm giving comments here as well during the game that would be nice to know <laughs> so nice direct <laughs> access to the teams of course to, to their tactics and what they're saying but we, we can't have this information oh and for the referees actually who do we have Orus looks like Orus who put it on the deck um, so yes we have no Emre on the deck Kaisa Linman in the water closed side and uh, Lutz on the open side <coughs> so both teams get a ball at the goals. same time. Goals got the ball, Ricardo. Couldn't see yeah, that Jody time. was behind him actually because yeah. passed to her. Now Jody gets the ball, goes towards basket on the open side. They're looking more concentrated now. Huh? Yeah, the goals, uh, the, they got some concentration, they didn't have apparently in the first half time, they were a bit more uh, fumbling. That's dangerous. Yes, right. That was dangerous, so and there was a goal. From the closed side. Yeah.
very nice goal from the Unidive goals from Australia in the very first minute of the second half the goal for Unidive goals that means now they keep make close make sure that they just keep this level or this um, yeah, I should really make sure Boston will really try to score now. We still have <laughs> eight and a half minutes to go in this halftime, so a lot can happen. And as we saw in the previous game, there was a goal in the last second or two games ago. No. And now it's only the goalie today, but this game over the head of the goalie, number 17. I've lost the list. Was by himself today, but it just went over him and scored. So it was uh, Joseph Gomez on the goal. We had three goals, three. Now it's hard to go for Boston now where it's to win. I need to have three goals. Go, Boston, go. Say, so, yay. <laughs> now, both have the ball, but no, Boston has the ball. You see, they're a bit uncoordinated. A bit like confused. The goal's got the ball again, number 11. What do you think in such situations would time out be helpful? If there is another goal against Boston, they I think they should take a timeout. There's still a lot of time Calm to down. go. Which team took a timeout before? Boston, no? I think the first half time there was already yeah. a timeout. Yesterday maybe. Uh, not no, no, there was no time. Okay, I'm getting a bit confused. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's fifth minute. It was like, um, this is my first game commenting now. Um, don't know what happens. Like a strategy when when it's coming, becoming confused when you lose the concentration. Exactly. Like now it was two two goals scored in a very short. Yeah. That oh, Boston player was underneath. Got the goal. Remember that they are still strong and they can do it. They played so nice in the first half, and now they have to come back to the really strategic playing. Losing the ball. As you see, the Boston Owls have one play on the water and we had three, four goals getting out, starting the counter attack. Not very fast, but still, there were way more on the water, so it's, it's hard then when you try to defend and you see all those players coming, it's more stressful, of course. And stress is a high, it's a very influencing factor actually when you have to hold your breath. To play on breath hold if you're stressed, you use your air faster as well. Absolutely, it's so on it's air and calm. it's also on, on thinking, concentration, on everything. It's like you feel like weak when you're stressed. So we have Jolly Wilson here, the other attacker is actually making her space. She was trying to watch herself between her attacker, her teammate, and the wall. Mm -hmm. Then managed to have Ricardo Diaz passing ball to break. Swimming back towards the close side. They're clearly focusing, or not focusing, but they are clearly playing, playing with their positions and all the time the team member is there where they expect to be. They're circulating the ball really well now. Yeah. They're taking their time, but not too much. They're still putting the novels in danger. Yeah. They're putting a lot of pressure on them and making them move around right, left to right, left to right. And that's the difference. They feel safe. And they just can play. They're not, now they're winning. They know that they're winning so far. Yeah. There's five minutes to go. They're not taking any risks, but they they're more comfortable as well. Which is always good when you're in this position. A couple goals ahead. Game is quite equal, but you're a bit dominant. So they can make. The, they're making their game. Actually, they're now they they decide what's happening. So now we have the four minutes to go. down. Another attack. Now we are mostly on the Boston Nervous um, basket in this half. In this half of the game. Well, the goal is open. The, the girls didn't see that. Otherwise, I think uh, Ricardo would have gone onto the basket. He didn't yeah. see it. He would have stolen it otherwise. Timmy Burke firing against Jody Wilson. Down. Both are down. Goals. Got it again, Jake Williams. That's the ball now. Okay. Back in midfield. Someone got a bit disoriented, <laughs> went back towards <laughs> his own basket. <laughs> and a Barringer with the ball. 
that's why I can grasp the ball. But sometimes things like this happen. Of course, especially well, when I've been turning underwater under a surface crumb. Sometimes. Sometimes this happens. Cool thing is when you then don't swim really fast towards the empty basket that turns out to be yours. And oh yeah, it's empty it. and you need to go. Go, go, and then it was yours. Oh, awful. Yeah. yeah. Awful, awful. Most, most awful situation everyone playing underwater rugby can imagine. Yes. And so now the narwhals apparently have the ball again, where uh, the goals are in defense position. Still, the ball is a few meters away of the second line mm -hmm. for the others going. <coughs> and no, they, they need to do attack together. That's where you see a difference. Now, it's got really tired. It was an approximate pass. The goals now are attacking the two, three players together. And the second, the next player comes very fast, and the now they're not making this anymore. They don't, they, they think they're tired. And when they're attacking, you have one person, and the girls have air and condition enough. They've been training a lot, they're doing a lot of land training to actually get out of the basket, see there is one player, and they go for it. So, free throw for holding without ball for Boston Owls. I don't know if it's me, but I hear all the time, I have the impression that there is a referee uh, yeah. beep. Okay, because there is a timeout now for the Narwhals. As you were saying, uh, Beate, that it's a good time now. I don't think they can really turn it around, but they will try. So taking some air and think about the strategy. Come together. I have, a bit I have some really good playing in the beginning. And when they come back to that, I think they can really do but they are maybe not really different at this time point, but there is a chance that well, it's a chance. So, so they, they got tired, I think. They got tired. Do you hear us alright in the chat? Because we don't really hear ourselves. Timeout is almost over. The referee here over the narwhals checking something. I think we have some candidate referees now refereeing. And the Jackrof is a candidate, so international referee, so we have observers as well. Yeah, that was Bob. Looking yes. into the water checking. Maybe the camera. Okay. So it was a surface scrum fighting for the ball. Nearly two minutes left. That's not a lot to do. Go, Boston, go. Really, and cross fingers. Oh, that's at the surface. That's really condition consuming, air consuming, concentration consuming when you're in that sort of struggle. Especially when you're really over the basket of one of the teams, you still need the defenders and the goalies to be able to be in their positions. So actually, the four checkers have to be the their ones in the scrum. So if the ball goes down. It's always, it's always tricky, we had some, some goals scored like that. The surface crumb, ball yeah. falling down, and then the team was a bit distracted. Free throw for the Boston Owls. I think this is also a training situation. You need to train and really um, advance the team that you, if you struggle. It's a surface, as you said, surface crumb. It's something you need to exercise as well, because when you have just a bit of time left, now you have less than a minute left, there's a game before the Czechs that just grabbed onto the ball against the Italians, and they did not let it go for almost oh. five seconds, because okay, we were winning, we don't want to take the risk over our basket, and just grabbed onto the ball and didn't let it go. Yeah. So now, now we're attacking, trying to do in the last seconds. So do Free throw for the goals. For I don't didn't see what the referee called. Jerry mm -hmm. Wilson has the ball. Well, that would be hard. In uh, Jake Williams no. attacking very good last position. Second. Not really, and. Uh, 
game. Mm. So Mati Gallo got right into the ball and didn't let it go, didn't let it get in the basket. So the game is over now. Game number five for today, 23 in total. Unit of goals, three against Boston Norwells, one. And this is last, that was the last game uh, in the men's group phase, actually. There's a frog on the screen, great. That was Laila from the next team. So next game, uh, we're finishing now, we're switching to the women's group games. Uh, with Amago against Helvetia, so Denmark against Switzerland. And now we have four women's games coming up. So Amago will play in blue, where they only have eight players, I think. And uh, Helvetia has uh, also a few players less, they don't have a full list either, I think. So, do you start, Beate, with uh, Sue? <coughs> From Amagev, uh, Blue, that's... With number two, Linnit jensen Penil. Number six, Lindberg hansen Mai. Number 11, Haida Marianne. Number 25, Press Wegeberg johanna Number 88, Iverson Dina. Number 90, Luz Laila. She was on screen right a few seconds ago. Number 95, Ruth Mill. And number 96, Christine Lundius, Marie. Okay, and for Helvetia, from Switzerland, we have number 5, Cecily Macler, 6, Andrea Hurtado, 7, Elena Hay, 9, Irene Kaiser, 10, Judith Buchli, 12, Oda Wiegen. 14 Simone Büchler, 17 Anne Svetinova, 21 Miriam Hagosnik, 22 Ellen Reift, 33 Tamara Cavelti, 42 Katrin Hayali, 46 Miriam Fuchs, and 81 Isabel Morgenstern. We have two Miriam in this team. Interesting. So, and for those on the screen, this lady with the little green dot on the on the pin, that's Laila in blue, number 19. Oh, is she?